Welcome to this APM video. In this video we're going to be installing this board here, a Minium OSD, onto an APM 2.6 and it's configuring it so that it goes in between the camera and the video transmitter to provide a great little on-screen display. Now the way this works is that it will plug into the telemetry port on the APM and then we've got one cable that will plug into the camera and another cable that will plug into the video transmitter itself. To do this you're going to need another piece of kit, you're going to need a trusty FTDI basic adapter. I'd always recommend that you get one with a proper FTDI uh, chip, it makes life a lot easier. If you're already into Arduino or multi-wee control boards you'll have one of these kicking around already. If not, search for FTDI basic on places like um, eBay and Banggood and you'll find them. This board is less than about $12 and will provide a similar kind of overlay and interface to systems costing three, four, five, ten times that amount. So it's a great investment and it's one of the coolest things that you can do. There are other Minim OSD videos on the channel already. So there's one about installing it onto the MultiWi and there's also one about installing it onto the NASA 32 boards. So this is a very versatile piece of kit. It doesn't only work with the APM, although that's what it was designed for. It's been developed to run with different platforms too. So in this video, we're going to actually connect it up to the computer. We're going to download the software and talk about where we get the software and firmware from. Once we've done that, we'll talk about how we then wire it up to the APM and how we wire it into the camera and the video transmitter. And then finally, we'll do a quick demo and showing it you in action. In addition to this one, if you're looking for a video to show you how to do this onto something like an APM Mini 3.1, there's also a video available that will take you through that too. So before we get into the bits and pieces let me just talk about how you connect the FTDI and the board together. Um, you'll notice that on the FTDI adapter and the back of the board they are clearly marked with all the different pins and you'll find one end is called black and one end is called green. You just need to match that up with the black and green pins on the other side and there you have it. You're ready to plug a USB cable into it, the other end of which can plug into your PC and we're ready to go onto the netbook and actually start downloading and configuring the board. So here we are on the netbook. The first thing we need to do is download the software that we'll both use to configure the Minima OSD but also the firmware that we're actually going to put on the Minima OSD that it'll run itself. Now there are a couple of options here for this that are very popular. The first one is Minim OSD hyphen extra that can be found at code.google.com slash p slash Minim OSD hyphen extra. This is the slightly later version of the code and you can download it from here and set it up. We're not going to use this one right now. We're actually going to use its uh, predecessor. Uh, we're going to use the original arducam.osd. Now the process we're going to go through is uh, very similar for Minim OSD hyphen extra. So if that is the one that you prefer, you can absolutely have a go at that. But I'm using this one for now. Now to download this, don't go into the downloads area. Click on the downloads of firmware and tools down here just above the donate button. If you click on there, it'll take you to a couple of files on Google Drive. The latest config underscore OSD and the latest minim OSD underscore 2.2 hex file. That is the firmware for the board. That is the uh, zip file that includes the graphical user interface. So we need to download both. I have done that and popped them onto my desktop. So there is the hex file that was ready to upload onto the board and there is the zip file. Now if we open the zip file we can see that there's um, only a handful of files in there and I've copied all of those into a new folder so we can run it. So let's start by running the osd underscore config executable and that should give us the interface to start flashing things up to the board. Now we're at the point where we can plug in our Minim OSD. So I'll plug in the FTDI connector to the bottom of the board and then I'll plug the USB cable into the machine. 
once that's connected, first thing we need to do is make sure that the right COM port is selected in this interface and then we're going to flash the firmware. So we'll go to update firmware, navigate to where the hex file is, which is on the desktop for me, so it's there it is, click open and here you can see it's now uploading the file onto the board. It's pretty quick this compared with some of the other videos that we've done for the MultiWii and NAS A32. Next thing we need to do then is update the fonts on the board. So we're going to update the character set. We're going to go into the new folder on the desktop. There's the character set. I'm going to click on open. There's the character set uploading, 254 I imagine. Fantastic. Okay, so now that's the firmware and the character set, we can actually do the configuration. So each of these three panels, config panel one and panel two, we're going to go through in series and when we've finished everything, we're gonna click on the save current tab to OSD. So I'm not using any RSSI information, uh, not bothered about toggling uh, the images, so we'll keep that the same. Um, if you want to know in particular what each of these parts do, then you can go to the web address that we were looking at before and read the wiki pages. Stall speed, mile per hour. Um, I'm actually going to put that very high just because I don't want stall speeds appearing because we're on a quadcopter. Um, over speed, I would say, let's put that about 45. Imperial units, um, that'll work for me. Minimum battery voltage, it's a three cell LiPo, so I wouldn't want to run it live anything below about 10.5. Battery warning level, let's have about 15. Let's save that tab to the OSD. And then we get onto the bit which is really nice with this interface. Here is the panel as it will appear on the interface. So this is how it's all configured. This is one of my standard kind of layouts. And over here on the left, you can actually turn things on and off and have it appear on the screen on the right hand side. Or if you're not sure what you're looking at, then you can actually click on the piece you're interested in and it'll show you what it is that you're looking at and the tick box then allows you to select it or not. So the way I've got it set up here is on the top left hand corner we have the number of visible satellites. Let me just move that around a little bit. Let's move it like that. I don't like to have things right at the very edge normally just because um, they can get in the way. Uh, that's the MAV heartbeat to show me that I'm getting updated information. Um, then we have... Oops. The heading rows, you know what, I don't like the center, let me get rid of that. Let's put the heading rows at the very top, so I can see which direction I'm going in. That is my um, direction to home arrow. I like that in a very prominent place, just so that I can find it. That up there is the distance from home, and then down here is my timer of how long I've been flying. Let's move that up just a smidgen. And then obviously that's my latitude and longitude the battery voltage and also the battery percent. I'm actually going to get rid of battery percent. I think we'll just keep the voltage. So that's how it could be. Or if you really wanted to, you could actually turn on everything. And as you can see, it starts to get a little busy. I don't like it anywhere near that busy. I find it becomes distracting on the actual flight. So we'll go back to panel one. We'll save that current tab to the OSD and that's what it should look like. And we'll save panel two to the OSD as well, just for completeness. Okay, so now I have my configuration set up. I have what I want it to look like. So I can see the mode, the amount of satellites that I've got, the MAV heartbeat pulsing away, my direction and uh, distance to home, my current heading, 
warnings right in the middle, latitude and longitude at the bottom in case I lose the craft. Then I can look at my last readings on the display and see what's happening. Time it in the bottom right hand corner so I to keep track of how long I've been flying and a good old battery voltage on the bottom left. Right, now we've done that, we can actually turn this off and we can start wiring it up to the APM. So the telemetry port is here on the APM 2.5, 2.6 and 2.7 and the telemetry port is plus 5 volts at the top, then transmit, receive pins and ground on the outside pin. All the APM pins tend to be ground on the outside. The Minim OSD has green and black at each end, which are those pins for alignment of the FTDI connector, and then it goes transmit, receive, plus 5 volts and ground. So cabling up is pretty straightforward. There's a DF13 style connector at one end, and on the other end you just make up the cables and plug them in. So first of all we'll connect the power, that's relatively straightforward, plus 5 volts to plus 5 volts, ground to ground, and then we connect transmit to receive, and receive to transmit. Once we've done that, we're ready to plug it into the telemetry port. But before we do, we just need to very quickly talk about power. The Minim OSD itself actually has a number of key components. The first is an Atmel 328 processor on the left hand side. The second is a Max 7456 chip. The processor on the left is the one that's actually running the code, the Max 7 456 monochrome OSD chip is the one that actually puts the images on top of the video that's coming in. And the other key component is a voltage regulator in the top right hand corner, but we'll come on to that in a second. There is a plus 5 volt power system that's connected to the plus 5 volt pin that we're going to connect to the APM, and that will power all of the Atmel processor and all of the components on this half of the board right up to the bottom of a little couple of pads at the very bottom corner. The next block is another plus 5 volt system that powers the Max chip which does the on-screen display itself and that plus 5 volts can be powered from a 12 volt system that is connected to the video in and out pins on the right hand side. And typically the way it would work in operation is that 12 volt area were through the voltage regulator would provide the 5 volts for the max chip. In practice though this can cause problems because there have been issues with the voltage regulator not working very well or overheating and damaging the board and taking out the max chip. So my recommendation is actually solder across the two joints here on the front of the board and at the back of the board as well that I'm pointing out now. If you solder these two parts, then what happens is the plus 5 volts that goes in the left hand side powers the entire board. And then what we're not going to do is put any voltage onto the video in and out pins, we'll just connect the ground and video. So let's have a look at the cable that I've made up. So here is the end that's going to plug into the Minim OSD, and here's the other end, the DF13 5 pin connector that's going to plug into the telemetry port. So that's one half of it done. The other half then, we need to talk about what we're going to put into the board so it can connect to the camera and the video transmitter. So here's the Minim OSD on the left, and we have the video transmitter connected via the typically three cables down into the camera. So the way it needs to work is that we need to put the Minim OSD in between the cable that runs from the camera to the video transmitter. And what we're going to do there is plug in the signal coming in from the camera into video in, along with the ground from that cable, and then we're going to plug the video out from the Minim OSD into the video transmitter. That, the, the video flows through the Minim OSD and that clever Max chip can overlay the images on it. So in reality, what I've done here is I've made up a couple of cables that will actually do this for us. So what we'll do now is we'll go to the bench and we'll actually plug everything in and then we'll fire it up and see it in action. So to wire this board into the APM is pretty straightforward now we've done all of our cables. First thing to do is plug the end into the APM telemetry port and that's going to just plug in using the cable that we've made. 
And then the second thing we need to do is plug in these two flying cables. I've just made these up because it makes it much easier to connect to everything and it keeps the polarities the same. Here's a video transmitter and the camera that we'd use for FPV. And to install it, all we're going to do is unplug the camera and plug the camera into one of the cables and then plug the other cable into the video transmitter. And now the video that comes from the camera is going to go through the MinimoSD the overlay of the on-screen display is going to be added and then out through the video transmitter. Now in practice I wouldn't use a whip aerial, I'd use a circular polarised or something else, a cloverleaf antenna. But what you'll notice is, if I just bring this a little bit closer, you can see that on the Minimo SD I haven't connected the plus 5 volts that comes out of the video transmitter to power the, the uh, camera. What I've done is just connected the ground and signal wires and the plus 5 volts I've just connected via this little connector that in practice would cover in heat shrink to protect it when we installed it in the vehicle. Okay, now we've got it all cabled, we need to power everything up and let me get my video ground station, pop it on the table as well and you can see it in action. So here we are looking at everything connected on the bench now. Here is my uh, Minim OSD with the two lights showing that the two 5 volt systems are running and the little light uh, amber light is pulsing in the corner. It's connected to the telemetry port on my APM. We're using whip aerials uh, because I haven't got enough spare um, clover leaves to try this out, which is why we're getting this horrible interference on the display because we're indoors and the vertically polarized signal is getting bounced everywhere. So it looks horrible. However, you can see on the screen that we have the information that we programmed into the on-screen display with the home, direction, disarmed, my longitude and latitude, battery voltage, flight time, number of satellites in the top right hand corner and the mode that I'm running. To prove that that's actually coming in, if I kind of move the black cloth, you can see the camera's working as well. Let's just cover that up to make it easier to see. So. Hopefully that helps you understand how you connect a Minim OSD up to your APM 2.5, 2.6 or 2.7 and get it all working. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and as always, happy flying.